like to say good morning once again to each and every one of God's children. We're certainly glad that you are here this morning to worship and praise the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We certainly have much to be thankful for as God has continued to carry each and every one of us through the storms and through the midst of this pandemic. God has truly been good to each and every one of us. And no matter what we face in our lives, God is still able yeah. to do exceedingly and abundantly above that which we ask. To those who are logging on live on Facebook, we thank God for your presence this morning. And we pray that you would pray along with us, those few who have gathered in the sanctuary. The word of God says, where two or three are gathered together, there he will be in their midst. And if you truly believe that God is a good God this morning and worthy to be praised, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you brought me such a mighty long Lord. Amen. And we come this morning to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just to lift, lift up holy hands and let God know yeah. that we are so glad. So thankful that he has looked beyond our thoughts and met our every need. Because the truth of the matter is we can trade places with those that are laying on beds of afflictions. Those who have had the unfortunate relief of contacting or contracting the COVID-19 virus. But here we are today. And though we are whole and healed, we want to keep those who are sick and in, in our prayers. As we worship God and we know God has been good to us, we just want to be like the words of Psalms 100 where it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sin. Know ye that the Lord he is God's. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord he is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Again we say good morning. We say thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. and praise the Lord. Right. It's a few of us in here, but we're going to let the Lord know these few don't play when it comes to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you to us got up this morning and came to the house of worship for any uh, faithness or faith praise or faith worship. All right. All right. But we came in because God has been good to us. And to those who are on Facebook, I can tell you, God has been good to you also. All right. And all you have to do is just think a moment. And you'll understand that if it had not been for God right. on our sides, yeah. truly, where would we be? That's right. But we thank God for allowing us to come to worship him once again on this blessed Sunday morning. All right. As Brother Brown will come forward now to read our morning scripture and then we will have a prayer for the beacon high of ground and again we just say welcome and thank you God for your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit Amen. Praise the Lord Our scripture this morning will come from the book of Ephesians we're going to Start at the second verse, and then we're going to read to the Lord says this or not. Which chapter you want? Ephesians, first chapter. We're going to begin at the second verse. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and to the hearers of his word and especially the doers. Going through a pandemic. 
pandemic, to me it seems longer. Uh, but it's only been one year. Uh, last year, 2019, the first Sunday in November, Pastor Montgomery took over as the pastor of the Guiding Star Baptist Church. Certainly, we would love to celebrate like we would normally do, but we're just asking our Facebook and YouTube audience if they want to post some congratulations to our pastor for his first year and simply say thank you uh, for serving, thank you for your message. And any of those, those of you that would like to also mail a card, you can use the church's address uh, with his name on it and mail it to the Guiding Star Baptist Church and you certainly will receive it. So we thank Pastor Montgomery. I know he never would have thought, neither would we, that he would be serving as pastor through a pandemic. So it's been a strange year, but yet we know that God uh, wasn't called of guard. Uh, still, God is able to lead us through this. Let's continue to pray for each other, uh, stay close to each other. And even as I mentioned last Sunday, uh, the best gift that we could give to our pastor for his first year anniversary is to stay together and All continue right. to pray. Uh, not to stray away, but to stay together and hold each other in prayer and in love. Mm -hmm. So please remember our pastor any way that you would like to. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The second announcement is, or reminder, is for those of you that have pledged for our media project. We ask that you uh, start working on your, your pledge and start getting those in if possible. Thank you.
everything we are and everything we will ever be. It's simply Jesus Christ our Lord. For it was he and he alone that laid down his life on the cross of Jesus.
you turned our lives around. Mm -hmm. And truth be known, God, sometimes we still fall. Well, we still sin. Well. But we thank you, oh God, for not removing your hand from us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for continuing to empower us and yeah. continuing to strengthen us. For God, we know in our weakness, you are made strong. Yes, yeah. God, and we pray for each other mm. that we will love one another as you have called us to love. Thank you, and we pray for our brothers and sisters who are climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. God, we pray for our brothers and sisters in this pandemic who yes, yes, yes. they find it extremely difficult to put food on their tables. Yes, yes, Lord. God, those who are facing a jobless situation. Well. God, we pray that you continue to keep them and bless them. Do, Lord. Continue, oh God, to provide for them. All right. And continue to make a way out of no way. Mm -hmm. yes, God, as I was reading stories the other day of people who were telling their stories of how they put back that little rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. But God, a rainy day fund does not help in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And though many had a little savings, it's gone. But we can think of the story of the woman who Elijah told to go make a morsel of bread. Yeah, yeah. God, and when she was faithful to that which your prophet asked. Yeah. <laughs> though she had been convinced in her mind and in her spirit mm. that that would be her and her son's last meal. Well, help, Lord. Mm -hmm. For they would eat it and lay down and die. Well, God, but through your great mercies yes, Lord. and your tender loving care, yes, Lord. God, as she walked by faith and not by sight, and she went in and did what the prophet asked her to do. Yes, Lord. She made that cake and brought it that Isaiah made. Mm -hmm. And God, then you blessed her more than she could ever understand. Well, help her. Because her truly walking by faith and not by sight, God, you never let that drop run dry. All right. And God, we ask that you never let the drop the jar run dry mm. of those who are destitute, mm. who seemingly are in hopeless situations. Yes, Lord. God, provide for them each and every day yes, Lord. until you turn this thing around. Yeah. God be with the sick mm -hmm. and the shut. Right. Be with those that are incarcerated and separated from their families. Yeah. Be with those who find themselves walking with no roof over their heads. Yeah. Those who are in these cool times find themselves sleeping on the ground. Well, under vows. Yeah. And sometimes right out in the open. Mm, yes. God, we pray that you cover them. Cover them Lord. Keep them and bless them. Lord. And provide for them a place of shelter. Mm -hmm. For not only the physical storm, uh -huh. but also for the physical, spiritual storm they find themselves in. Lord. Lord. God, and we, your people, will be careful to give you the praise. Hallelujah. The honor and the glory. Oh, yes. Help us to do your blessed will, lead God, and direct us. Praise Lord. That we may be the children of God that you have called us to. Yes, yes. God, and when our days are over on this earth, yes. God, we pray that you would once again open up the gates of heaven. Yes. And usher us in where we may see and hear that you say, Job well done. All right. Thy good and faithful servant. Yes, yes. But until that day, God. Yes. Allow us to work on your behalf. Yes, Lord. And tell this word that there is a reality in serving oh, yes. a true and a living God. Yes. Oh, yes. God, we thank you for so much. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything. Yes, 
We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yeah. Please, God, forgive us of our sins yeah. Yeah. and our shortcomings. And we will certainly be careful yeah. to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that your name so richly deserves. Yeah. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. And for this sake, we do humbly pray yeah. and ask it all. And everybody say amen. 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 You often hear me say sometimes you just got to lean on the Holy Spirit. All right. Because truly so many of us are hurting. Mm -hmm. So many of us find ourselves in predicaments we never thought we would be in. All right. And I bet you as a church, if we took a little stroll <coughs> just a few short blocks from here, met one who slept outside last night, mm. and asked him what happened, and how did you end up in this particular place? Mm -hmm. Many of them would give you an answer. Some may say I had a good job and my job closed up. Now I found myself sleeping outside. Mm. Many of them were separated from their families for one reason or another. Mm. Yeah. Some were married and their spouses walked out on them. Mm. And they find themselves in the situation that has befallen them. Well. Why do I say that? Because truthfully, it could happen to us. Well, it's all right. <clears throat> and truthfully, though, some of us are not outside, where the rain and the cold and the bitterness can get into our bones. Mm -hmm. Some of us feel that way spiritually. Mm -hmm. Some of us feel that way spiritually because we don't understand that God has made a way out of no way. All right. All right. Yes, Some of us look at our situations and our predicaments and we wonder, God, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that some things that happen in our lives are simply out of our control. That's right. Yes, right. But the God that we serve is capable and able to do anything yes, yes. that we stand in need of. Yes, yes. Yes. So if you would, for a few minutes, turn with me to first the book of uh, Second. Chapter number five and verse number seven. And then we're going to turn back to Romans 1 16 and 17. So our first scripture this morning will be 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. If you found it, let us say amen. amen. Actually, I'm sorry, let's read Romans 1 16 and 17. Romans 1, 16 and 17. If you found that, let us say amen. 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 And it reads, amen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. <laughs> Second Corinthians 2, 5 and 7. Read, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For a few minutes this morning, I want to speak from us from the topic. Walk out of your hill by walking into your destiny. All right. All right. Walk out of your hill by walking into your destiny. I need to, for us to understand this morning that as believers in God, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. I need us to understand that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. God calls us 
us as believers to trust in him no matter our circumstances or the conditions in which we live. All right. God calls us to trust him in all things and not some things. Right. You and I have to have a determined spirit and a made up mind that we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. All right. We have to have a made up mind that we're going to walk out of our hell and into our destinies. Right. You see, you have to understand this morning that what God has for you is only for you. You can't do the job that God has assigned to my hand, nor can I do the job that God has assigned to your hand. All right. We have to understand this morning that what we gain in this world is not only temporary, but it cannot bring us true happiness, nor can it bring us joy. All right. When our circumstances dictate how we feel and our feelings dictate our emotions, it is easy for the children of God to get turned around and lose sight spiritual sight. Mm -hmm. It is easy to lose the sight of where God is taking us. Well. We have to understand that sometimes in this life, life struggles will knock us down. Mm. Yes, sir. But how we respond to life struggles determine not only to ourselves, but to others and more importantly to God. Of how we truly walk by faith and not by sight. If something is going on in your life and all you do is walk around and complain and, and have a pity party, mm -hmm. I would be truly concerned that you are not walking by faith, right. mm -hmm. but you're walking by sight. Right. If you can only see physically what is happening in your life, instead of spiritually being able to allow God to lead you, mm -hmm. we run the risk of losing sight of where God is taking us. Right. As life knocks us down, sometimes we must understand that we can get back up again. Right. We have to understand that God placed in us a spirit that is powerful and overcoming. Mm -hmm. We have to understand this morning that God placed in us a spirit that's not, that does not give up, but depends on him. Right. You see, we, we have to understand that we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. Right. Some of us this morning Maybe we could take a step back in our lives and ask God, am I walking by faith instead of by sight? All right. You see, some of us want God to do what he does in our lives as if we're opening up presents and looking in and we can see exactly what the gift was. Uh -huh. But sometimes in our lives, we must understand that God does not make it so simple and so plain, but he calls on each of us to trust and be, be directed by him. All right. You see, if God made it so easy and so plain for us to obtain everything that he has done in our lives or everything he wants us to do, some of us would be lazy and content. Right. Right. But God says sometimes in order to walk by faith and by, or not by sight, I have to make things difficult in your life so that you will continue to trust in me. Mm -hmm. I have to make things sometimes for you to climb the rough side of the mountain for you to understand that I am there to carry you through your storm. Yes. All right. You see, some of us need to understand this morning that we are victorious. Mm -hmm. We are overcomers because God is on our side, and God being on our side, he is more than all the world against us. That's right. That's right. You see, so this morning we have to understand, as I pose to you just a couple questions for you to ponder in your hearts. I ask you the question, what is it that allows you to be victorious in God? Mm. What is it that allows you to have a victorious spirit knowing that you can overcome? Yeah. What is the key to us learning that we are overcomers and more than conquerors? Yeah. How do we know that we can trust God in all things and God can trust us mm. in all things? Yeah. Yeah. How do we get to the point where we're confident that God does do everything and that God is confident that what he assigns to us, we are, he's confident that we will do. All right. How many of you are able to look beyond your circumstances to that place where God has prepared for you? Mm -hmm. All right. The answer is this, is we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Right. We have to have a quiet confidence in God, knowing that God has the ability to allow us to be overcomers and 
to walk out of our burdens. Amen. You see, this morning, some of us have to prepare our hearts for a better tomorrow. Amen. Some of us have to prepare our hearts to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and to dwell in us and lead God and direct us. All right. When we have that quiet confidence in God, we don't have to go and tell somebody all the time that I believe in God. Uh -huh. Because they can see it in your walk and see it in your talk and see it in the way that you read. Uh -huh. You see, when we walk by faith and not by sight, we don't have to go tell somebody that I used to be this all the time because they see the change that God made in your life. You see, whatever we experience in this life, God has already made a way for you and I to try. Yeah. As you ponder those questions in your spirit, you know if you're walking by faith and not by sight. All right. You see, this morning, whatever suffering, whatever trial, or whatever burden, whatever fear or discouragement you may be experiencing, it is not tragic. It is not death to you. But those who do not understand or trust in God, those who do not walk by faith nor by sight, run the risk of an eternal separation from God. Yeah. Oh, what tragedy that would be. All right. Christ, when he died on the cross of Calvary, made it possible for every person that is a sinner to come to God. All right. He made a way for us to put down our burdens and pick up our crosses. All right. He made a way for us to walk out of our former lives and be what God is calling us to be. That's right. You see, our temporary experiences that we face in this life is not to overcome us or to devour us, but it is to cause us to walk by faith yeah. and not by sight. All right. You see, Psalms 37 and 5 tells us that we ought to commit our ways to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Trust also in Him and God will bring it to pass. All right. The Apostle Paul, while he was in prison, learned the antidote to his problems. Yeah. Paul understood that in order to walk out of my hell and begin to walk in my destiny, though I'm chained and I'm bound, I'm going to trust in God. All right. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight, though I have enemies all around me. Uh, I know that I'm going to overcome. You see, sometimes as we look at Romans 8 and 28, it tells us all things work together for the good of them to those that love the Lord, yeah. to those who are called according to his purpose. Right. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 tells us we are troubled on every side, yeah. yet not distressed. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are perplexed, but not in despair. So many people say, if I had more, I would do this. So many people said, if I had just a little more, then I could obtain this. But we have to understand this morning that those who are in the world that have a whole lot had a lot more peace in their life before they had all that they had. You see, when you have all the riches of the world, you, know, you don't lay down in your bed and sleep peaceful because you got to wonder how am I going to keep what I have. You ain't not only wonder how you're going to keep what you have, but you wonder how you're going to get more. Well, yeah. But those who walk by faith and not by sight understand that God will supply your yeah. every need. Right. Those who walk by faith and not by sight, we can lay down peaceful at night because as the little children say, now I lay me down to sleep. Yeah. I pray the Lord, my soul be keep. Yeah. When you walk by faith and not by sight, your destiny may never be a reality. Unless you're willing to go through the storms of life. All right. I'm going to say that again. Your destiny may not ever be a reality unless you're willing to go through the storms of life. All right. As children of God, come hell or high water, we must be convinced that we can walk out of our hills and into our destinies. All right. We can do this because God is not only willing and able, but he says you are willing and able. All right. You may not understand that. You may not come to the point in your life where you trust God to do all things. But God says he's preparing a place for you. God is opening up your fields. God is prospering you. And one day you're going to see God working in your life. And when you begin to see God working in your life, you'll begin to say, now I'm walking by faith and not by sight. All right. Listen, sometimes we understand that our faith 
is troublesome. Mm. Sometimes we have to understand that hell in our lives is unwise. Mm. Sometimes we have to understand that we do not want trials and tribulations in our lives. Well, but we are, by the grace of God, become overcomers. All right. As James 2 and 17 tells us, knowing that the testing of our faith produces patience. Mm. This morning we ought to understand that strength is normally born out of adversity. Mm -hmm. Strength is normally born out of adversity. Mm -hmm. Hardships and ups and downs. Yeah. We need to be part of chapter verse 17. Paul tells us, but the righteous shall live by faith alone. All right. God never promised that it would be easy. Mm. God never promised that you wouldn't have to walk up a fool's hill. God never, prom never promised that your burdens would not weigh you down. The fact of the matter is God tells us the exact opposite. Yeah. That's why he tells us the man that comes after me must deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow okay. after me. All right. Jesus warned his disciples that sometimes hellhounds are going to get on your trail. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to be talked about. Sometimes you're going to be pushed down. But guess what? Walk by faith and not by sight and you can get back up. Right. Again, the word of God is the antidote to our problems. It is through Christ and faith and obedience that we can become over We can become overcomers. Right. When we grow in the richness of God's grace and are known by Christ, and Christ is known by us, then we will find ourselves in a position of prejudice, but we can find ourselves, though we may feel bitter at some times, finding joy in our situations. All right. uh -huh. You see, when we are God's children, we can come before God because we know God is merciful. Yeah. Because we know his grace is sufficient and his love is everlasting. All right. All right. You see, one's choice will position him before God in a way that they will either rejoice in God. But they will find themselves in bitter regret, not only today, but in the life to come. Yeah. Those who choose to trust in God know the joy that you may weep sometimes, but joy comes in the morning. Right. As the old hymn writer says, our faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Yeah. Paul conferred to us that in our weakness, God is making us strong. Yeah. That's how we are able to walk out of the hell in our lives and begin to walk into our destiny. Yes, As Paul conferred in our weakness, God is made strong. Our problem is that we don't trust God. Yeah. In our problems, we have to understand that God is the calming factor. It is by his grace and his love that we become overcomers. Uh -huh. For so many, God wants to bless us and take us into our promised lands. For so many, God is wanting to enlarge your territory, but you're stuck in your yesterday and in your right now. You're looking at your situation of people telling you it never amount to anything. You're looking at your situation and saying, God has not answered my prayers. You're looking at your situation because somebody walked out on you, but God is telling you to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look at your right now. Look at where I'm taking you. All right. Walk out of your hell and begin to walk into your destiny. Yeah. When we understand that as a person, if we can say our yesterday is brighter than today, well, we're not trusting God. Well, right. If we can say our yesterday or, or our right now is brighter than our future, we're not trusting in God. All right. You see, there is no way that a believer in God's life yesterday was better than it is today. Uh -huh. How do I know that? Because you and I did not know the love of God. Yeah. You and I did not understand the grace of God. And you and I did not understand that God was merciful when we were unmerciful people. Uh -huh. yeah. You see, this morning, in order to walk out of your hell and into your future, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Sometimes you may have to climb the rough side of the mountain. Yeah. Sometimes you may have to shed a tear. Sometimes you may have to walk alone. Huh. Sometimes you may have to leave things and people behind. But you can't be afraid to let go and let God do a good work in your life. Yeah. You can't be afraid to let God open up and prosper you in your life. Don't worry about somebody that what God gave you because what God blesses you with is only for you. All you right. can't let somebody tell you that you're not good enough for God to bless you because guess what? The truth of the matter is none of us were good enough until Jesus came into our life. Yes. None of us were good enough until Jesus allowed us to walk out of our hell and into our destiny. Yes. 
when you're a child of God, God had predestined you. He had adopted you way before you chose him. And when you were predestined, you know, chosen by God. God, as we read in our scripture this morning, gave you an inheritance. He blessed you and he kept you. And God says, not only am I preparing a place for you, but guess what? I'm going to enlarge your territory. Amen. See, our enlargement of our territories is not always something that we can physically hold in our hands. All right. Sometimes God enlarging our territories is giving us a spirit when we used to cry out and be destitute. Sometimes it's when we had walked around with our heads bowed down and our hearts troubled that we didn't know the peace of God. Sometimes we still don't understand that God gives you a peace that surpasses all understand. Some people still don't understand that when you were in your trouble, God was your bridge over that trouble water. Somebody don't understand when they were running around those four flat tires, God urged you up and told you to keep on rolling because I am your strength, I am your power, I am your all. You, know? you see, sometimes in our state of disconnectedness, it is hard to focus on God. Uh -huh. Yet it's God is the only one that can guide us out of our valleys to our mountain house. Right. When you decide to let go and to let God bless you and leave your hell behind, then you will begin to give God the glory in all things. Yeah. As Paul taught us in our weakness, God is made strong. He said it is then when you begin to praise God in your hell that you will begin that the enemy intends it for your bad because God intends it for your good. Yeah. You see, when things happen in your life, you have to take courage of yourself. Speak the word of God over your life and begin to walk out of your hill and into your destiny. Yes. You see, some people in the Bible understood what it was to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Daniel, when he found themselves in the lion's den, it wasn't because Daniel had done anything. It was because he had haters in his life. It was those who didn't want Daniel to prosper and to walk out of his hill and begin to walk in his destiny. They looked at Daniel and said, guess what? God is blessing you too much. We're going to have to stop you. They placed Daniel in the lion's den. They closed up the lion's den and they put the covering on it. But don't you know the next morning when the king said, Daniel, why are you there? Jesus came and, 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 excuse me, Daniel said, yes, king, I am here. What happened in the lion's den? Daniel said, Jesus, uh, shut the lion's mouth. Don't you know Jesus will shut the enemy's mouth in your life? Because they want to devour you. They want to overtake you. But God says, guess what? I can shut not only the mouths of lions, but I can shut the mouths of your enemies. He says, come on, Joseph. Don't you know what I did in your life? Jesus, Joseph was taken from his father's house. He was placed in a pit. He went from the pit. He was traded into slavery. He went from slavery. He was put in the prison. But don't you know, Joseph said, guess what? Y'all can't stop me. I'm going to walk out of my hell and walk into my destiny. From the pit to prison, from prison to slavery, Joseph said, guess what, God? I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't you know that Jesus is exalting him when nobody else thought he could do anything? When you look at the Hebrew boys, just because they wouldn't bow down to their haters, because their haters wanted to keep them in their hell, they said, oh, no, King, you don't understand. We're not going to bow down to you. We're going to bow down only to God, who is able to keep us, who is able to protect us. And he says, guess what? I see what you say, but guess what? You're going to turn on God, because I ain't going to command the birds to be heated up seven times harder than normal. They said, that's all right, King, because if we go into our furnaces, guess what? Either God is going to keep us, and God is going to protect us, or God is going to bring us out. You know the rest of the story. They stayed in the fiery furnace. They were in their hell, but guess what? In their hell, God protected them. And when they opened up that furnace, not only did the three Hebrew boys walk out, but they said, I see another man that looked like the Father of God. Don't you know you don't have to stay in your hell? It doesn't matter that your furnace gets heated up seven times hotter. God says, walk out of your hell and into your destiny. See, what we have to understand that the world is going to be against the children of God. Yes. The world is not going to like you because you are a child of God. Yes. Sometimes they're going to tell you that you're nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You are a holy roller. You're a bound uh -huh. But guess what? Yeah. No matter what your enemies lay in front of you, yeah. no matter what trouble comes into your life, uh -huh. no matter how many times you fall, <laughs> children of God, yeah. can get back up the way. All right. All right. We walk by faith in it. Mm -hmm. 
not by the sun. Yes, sir. We ought to learn how to praise God in our hell. Yeah. We ought to learn how to praise God when we're down. Yeah. We ought to bring able to praise God when other things we ought to lose our minds. Yeah. We ought to praise God in all situations yeah. because we walk by faith yes, and not by sight. All right. The old song says trouble doesn't last all. All right. If you walk by faith and not by sight, mm -hmm. you may not see, you may only be able to see that door that was closed in your face. Well, but God sees your future. God sees your destiny. So and God will not only see it, but he will do a good work in you. Yeah. When the waters of life flood in your life, God will speak to your soul yeah. and say, peace, be still. All right. We're either going to trust God yeah. to handle our mess, or we'll let our mess overcome our lives. Yeah. Let me encourage you this morning to let you know that God will exalt you. Yeah. when you least expect it. All right. God will bring you out of your hill when you least expect it. Yeah. Okay. Well, and not only will he bring you out of your hill, but he'll place you in your destiny. All right. I can't tell you what God has for you. Well, I can't tell you what God is taking you, but I'm telling you one thing for sure, that God is taking you somewhere. Yeah. And though you may not be able to understand or see what God is doing in your life, yeah. trust him that God will do a good work. All right. Walk by faith and not by sight. Allow God to direct you, God to lead you, and God to keep you. All right. For God is our provider. Uh -huh. He gives us provisions that never fail. All right. His love is everlasting and his grace is sufficient. Yes, the things God has ordained, ordained and planned for your life will come to pass. All right. Your heel may be hard to claim. Your struggles may be real. However, the word of God teaches us to glory in our afflictions. Right. Because when we can glory in our afflictions, it brings glory to the name of God. Right. You may feel broken. You may feel bruised. You may feel bad. You may feel left all alone. Right. And even then, as a believer, you may feel disconnected from the love of God. Well, you may be hurting so much on the inside that you won't let anything, and especially God, do it. Well, but God is telling you to let that go, let go. and let me do in you All right. what only I can do. All right. God knows that he can't fail, and God can't fail, which means we can't fail. All right. Walk out of your hill and into your destiny. All right. Pray this prayer that I learned to teach to myself. God, I know that I have failed you at times in my life. Well, but I thank you for bringing you, bringing me from my hell to my destiny. All right. Lord, free me from me, that your glory will be seen in me. Uh, that I will be able to forever praise you uh, in my midst. All right. Thank you, God, for your grace. Uh, thank you for your mercy, for saving the wretch. Like me. All right. From my hell to my destiny, you have been right there with me. All right. Yes, sir. You finish it by saying hallelujah. 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 And glory hallelujah. to your name. Yes. Church, understand this morning what God has for you. Yeah. It's simply for you. All right. From the cradle to the grave, huh? God can make a way out of nowhere. Yes, sir. For he is not a man that he can lie. If God said he'll bring you to it, then God will truly bring you to it. For it was from the cradle to the grave and from the grave to glory that God raised up Jesus and exalted him above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess yeah. and every knee shall bow. All right. I finish and close with this this morning. Hebrews says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right. Walk out of your hill. Leave everything behind. Mm -hmm. Look to the hill from which coming to you. For your help comes from you. All right. We thank God this morning uh -huh. for his presence in our lives. Yes, Lord. And to each and every one of us, I challenge you and I admonish you to walk out of your hill mm -hmm. and into
anything to your destiny. Yeah. Knowing that God loves you more than you love yourself. Yeah. Understand that God wants you to prosper not so much in the physical world, but he wants you to prosper in your hearts. Yeah. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge God. Yeah. And God will direct your path. Yes. We thank God for his presence. And we pray that you are blessed and encouraged by the word of God. Yes. For those of you who are sitting in the sanctuary or those that are listening back on Facebook, we pray that you would find courage, encouragement in God. Yes. Be empowered by the Spirit of God. And understand that God truly does love you. And though since he loves you, God will never leave you nor forsake you. For God is our keeper. God is our all in all. God is our everything. Because in everything he gave to Christ. And Christ is holding us in his hand as he sits at the right hand of God. For you who have not taken Jesus as your Savior, open up your heart and let him in. Jesus will never harm you. He will only take you, pick you up, love you more than you can love yourself. Right. And even in the midst of your storm, he will carry you through. God, our Father, the blessed and mighty name of Jesus. Again, we just come to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, God, for taking us out of our hill and placing us in our destiny. For those, oh God, this morning who do not know what their destiny is, well, who has not truly gave their lives to you, yeah. who are not walking by faith, but walking by sight, yeah. God encourage them and let them know that they need not be fearful of you yeah. because you did not give them a spirit of fear, but a spirit of boldness. And each of us can come before the throne of grace and mercy bold, proclaiming that we have the victory mm. because we have you. God, we know that you made our futures bright well. because Jesus told us that he was going to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we may be also. Thank you, Lord. God, we only ask that you strengthen yeah. us, yeah. keep us, lead God in the ranks. Yeah. When we fall, get us back up again. Yeah. When our faith fails us, mm. strengthen us, yeah. encourage us, and let us know mm -hmm. that we are your child. Yeah. And because we are your child, God, we can stand in the midst of our storms. Look at it. Eye to eye. And tell me that I'm a local coming. Because my storms don't last on. But my God is eternal. We thank you, Lord. We praise your holy and righteous name. For it's in Jesus' name that we do ask and pray. Amen. 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 Again, we thank you for your presence. We thank those who joined us on Facebook. We pray that God will keep you and that God will continue to smile on you. God is I love you, and we as a church love the world. We love you. You can't make it to the house of worship, but we want you to know that if you ever need us, we remember where God brought us from, and we'll be glad to help you get you through. For we are God's children. And though God loves us, he calls each of us to love one another more than we love ourselves. <laughs> we'll see you on the next week of Bible study. We thank God for you and may God